uh, I want to talk about something really important, just as a general, um, as a general thing for everybody to think about. And I want to talk about uh, learning thresholds. All right. And uh, what I mean by a learning threshold is what is the appropriate tempo at which to practice your tunes? Okay. Now in the real world or in the objective world, let's take the world of sport. Okay. Threshold is really easily discussed and thought about and makes total sense. And it's totally obvious. Let me give you an example. Uh, I can run an eight minute mile. Actually, I'm not sure I could right now, but uh, conceptually, I can run an eight minute mile. Okay. Uh, that's about as fast as I could run it. Now, if I want to develop my running and if I want to get faster, trying to run a six minute mile would be a huge mistake. Why would trying to run a six minute mile be a huge mistake? Remember, I'm, I'm trying to improve my running. So I currently run an eight minute mile. Why would trying to run a six minute mile be a huge mistake? Good. Tina says your body's not ready. Janet says you need to work up to that. And then Ephraim, very, very correct. You're going to gas out before you finish. You're going you're gonna to die probably pretty quickly into the run. Brian says, too much, too soon. I love this. This is giving me great ammunition. Dave says, too big a leap. Right. Now, when we're, uh, and then meanwhile, right, the correct thing to do would probably to shoot for maybe 745. Right. If, if I, meanwhile, if I run an eight minute mile and I want to improve, shooting for 745 might be the better way to do it. Right. And then, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, gradually increase the pace of our mile over time. The mile is a big body of work, right? We need to be able to sustain our bodies for quite a long time in order to run a mile. Right. <clears throat> Ephraim says, yes, that's really good. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, here's the other thing to think about though. If I just keep running eight minute miles, am I going to get any better? No. Right. Now, I, I suppose you could, uh, uh, I suppose you could sustain, but, you know, by definition, we measure a mile by how fast it goes. So unless we're actually getting faster, we're not getting any better. Right. You could sustain it and that's valuable, but we're not actually going to get any better. I'll be good at an eight minute mile for sure, but not any faster. Or maybe I would, I would be able to go faster, but if we never really attempt to go faster, uh, we're not going to get any better because we're not going to know. You know, like, don't get me wrong. I think it's possible to run, a, you know, continue to run eight minute miles while focusing and changing our technique to make running an eight minute mile easier. And then, the next time we attempt to go faster, it's going to go well for us. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to confuse the issue too much. And then Tina would, Tina says, you would stay in your comfort zone. That's right. So staying in our comfort zone. Exactly. Now, so the issue there is just like, the issue there is just uh, discussing our threshold. Dave, it's all right. Sounds like Dave might actually be a runner or a worker outer. Right. And, and then, uh, oh, he's a swimmer. There you go. And then John says a 10% increase in tempo for me is often too much jump at one time. Exactly. Now, the problem with piping is that it's not a subjective measurement. Quality is not a subjective measurement. At least, sorry, excuse me. It's not an objective measurement, generally speaking right? The quality of it is always in the eye of the beholder. Uh, I think the dojo is the closest methodology that exists um, to help aspects of piping become more objective, you know, which has its own set of pros and cons. All right. But the big problem is piping is not an objective thing. So what happens when people try to run the equivalent of an eight minute mile when they're playing the bagpipes? is it doesn't go well for them. All right, what's the equivalent of an eight minute mile playing the bagpipes? Let's say it's um, Athol and Bredalbin gathering at 60 beats per minute. 
or something, right? It doesn't go well for them when they try to run the eight minute mile, the alpha and been gathering at 60 beats per minute. It doesn't really go well for them, but there's usually a couple things that mask the fact that it didn't go well. Number one is it goes well for very few people. Like none of our friends can play an eight minute mile either, right? I think that's one of the reasons. Um, I think the other reason is not that many people know any better. And then I think another big reason is the person playing Athel and Dalbin Gathering at 60 beats per minute doesn't know themselves the volume, like the degree, the number of things that are actually going wrong as they attempt to play it. Partially because they don't understand fundamentals correctly. And part of it's because things are going by so quickly, there's no way they can keep track of it all. All right. So uh, this person is playing, the, the person I'm describing, the average person is playing Athel and Berdalbin gathering above or below their current threshold. Good. Yeah. So, so I just, you know, we're, we're just kind of thinking of this. This is just a thought experiment. So that person, the average person is playing above their threshold. Now, going back to running, right? If we continue to attempt to run six minute miles, all right, Ephraim says we're going to burn out early and we're probably not even going to finish the mile if, if we try to run it in six minutes, okay? But if we keep doing that, if we keep bashing our heads against the wall, what is going to happen? John says maybe you'll get injured. That's probably not going to happen in piping. <clears throat> Um, but you're probably going to develop bad habits. <clears throat> Agree? Like, can we, um, uh, let's bring our athlete back into the mix. Bad habits probably, right? And then uh, fail and give up. Dave says, yes, okay, good. Dave and I are back on the same page. Uh, resentment, I like that. Fail and give up, Brian says, yeah. You know the problem with piping is, Everyone's like, oh my God, it's so great. You're, you play bagpipes? That's so cool. Uh, and then your instructors are usually like, they don't want you to fail and quit either. So they're like, oh my God, it's coming along. Keep at it, right? Uh, so <laughs> it's different than when we run the mile, right? If we run the mile and your mile is eight minutes, what do people say? Hey, good job. That's an eight minute mile. You know, because that's what, that's what it is, okay? <laughs> but in piping, right, we, we, uh, we, attempt to run a, <laughs> we attempt to run our six-minute mile in piping, and it doesn't go very well for us. And people are like, hey, great job. Keep at it, which is good, okay? It's good, but it, um, <clears throat> it, it doesn't, like, give us the dose of reality we probably need to acknowledge the very important reality, which is that we are operating far above our threshold. Right? Everybody agree? We're operating far above our threshold. Uh, and ironically, if anything, p the average person's reaction to that is just to play faster. Playing faster as a piper is a really, uh, by the way, I keep looking down because I, I think if I just move this up here. Yeah, so playing faster as a piper is really, you know, appealing because things go by faster. It's even harder for you, the user, to detect all the faults. And so it seems more enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, your yucky D throws, right? If you just play faster there, it's over sooner. Okay, but that's of course not the right thing to do. And in real life, if, if we are playing, um, <clears throat> if we're playing a sport or if we're running, it could result in actual injury, right? And it's certainly gonna result in the development of bad habits. Okay, so what is the correct threshold for us to operate in? We already sort of talked about it with running, right? If our current personal best is an eight minute mile, uh, the threshold for us to operate in should be just slightly faster than an eight minute mile, right? So our, let's make our goal for this mile. And again, I'm generalizing, sorry for, you know, Sorry for actual athletes here, but uh, let's make our goal 745. And then if we run and we get 745, great. Now we could increase our threshold even to an even better time, 
7.30. And then maybe in shooting for 7.30, you know, maybe we get, maybe we go back up to 7.50 in the next attempt and maybe we get all the way down to 7.37 on one attempt. But at that point, you're kind of operating in the appropriate threshold if your goal is to improve um, the time of your mile, right? That's the correct threshold is, is you find the point where you can't achieve the goal, but you're close, right? You're riding that line between where you can't achieve the goal and where you're close, all right? And that gives us really big clues uh, as to where we should be operating when we're practicing our bagpipes. So there's some good thoughts here. And there's some underdeveloped thoughts as well. So Brian says, our threshold is our own tempo, man. Yeah, but if I continue to run eight minute miles and I don't really try to run any faster than that, generally speaking, um, you know, we, we're just staying in our comfort zone and we're not actually moving forward. So we can't just arbitrarily say our own tempo. We need to be more specific. Uh, Beth says the tempo at which we can play well. Getting warmer, I think. I don't think we're quite there enough. John says, slow enough for good fundamentals, then increase until mistakes start to occur. Sure. So we want to start in our comfort zone, John says, and then uh, we want to increase the tempo over time uh, to find the point where mistakes start to occur. I, I kind of like that. I think that's basically it. It's not about having perfect control either. I, we need to just figure out where that line is where things start to break apart. And that would be our current threshold. All right. Perfection is kind of not what we want, right? At least not until we get to that optimal tempo, right? Like we, we know optimal like tempos, generally speaking, kind of exist. Like, like a jig's optimal tempo is around 120 beats per minute. A stress bass optimal tempo is around 120 beats per minute ish could be a little bit more okay so once we're there and we're achieving perfection great but most of us are not there so uh what we actually need to do is we need to find the threshold where things start to break things become perfect and um, but then they start to they start to break and that's the appropriate tempo for us to play at Lou says, reach your breaking point and pull back a bit. No, reach your breaking point and practice there. 